Higher Technical and Vocational Education. The hearing of the Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education is hereby resumed. Chair would like to ask the Committee Secretary to acknowledge the presence of our invited guests, both online and physically here at the at the committee room. Claire. Good morning, Mr. Chair. Good morning, everyone. Uh, for this morning's public hearing, I would like to acknowledge the presence of the following resource persons. From the Commission in Higher Education, we have um, Chair Prospero de Vera III. With him um, are the following. We have Director Raul Muyong. Good morning, sir. Attorney Frederick Mikael Farolan. Attorney Peter Lloyd Carpio and Ms. Zairiel Gomez. Also online from CHED is Dr. Bashiruddin Ajihil. From the Department of Budget and Management, we are joined here, um, today uh, by Attorney Trisha M. Baraan, as well as Director Mark James Evangelista and Ms. Paula Danohog. From the um, Philippine Association of State Universities and Colleges, Attorney Luz Viminda Rosales. Morning, ma'am. From the Association of Local Colleges and Universities, we have Dr. Raymond Raimundo Arcega and Ms. Edeline Maghinay. Also from the uh, from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines, we are joined online by Dr. Manuel Muhi. That's all, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Claire. Let's skip item one as the last item to be discussed. Let's, in the meantime, take up the other um, items um, in the agenda, beginning with item two. That is Senate Bill number 2448, amending PD number 1341, Charter of the Polytechnic University of the Philippines and other purposes. Um, I read the proposed bill of Senator um, Zubiri. Um, admittedly, the charter of the PUP is um, outdated, having been enacted in 1978, and chair is inclined to um, make the necessary updates necessary. But before that, um, chair would like to acknowledge um, and recognize um, Chair Bapo Ikaw, or Chair would like to acknowledge um, Chairman of the Committee on, of the um, Commission on Higher Education, Chairman Popoy de Vera. Sir, your comments on Senate Bill number 2448, please. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, the bill as filed is the same bill that was filed in the previous uh, Congress. And as everyone knows, uh, President Duterte vetoed the bill. The... Uh, veto message uh, basically says that if a uh, state university is granted significant fiscal and institutional autonomy, its status must be compared with all other state universities and colleges, meaning it must be significantly different or better or higher ranked than other state universities and colleges so that they will get these particular privileges, just like the University of the Philippines. And uh, the concern of the commission is that if we make PUP a national university, it might set a precedent for other state universities and colleges who are internationally ranked, who are performing very well in licensure tests, may demand the same treatment and the Senate would be inundated with a lot of national universities' uh, bills. Uh, that is the concern of the, of the Commission, because uh, all over the world, the use of a national university is really reserved for the premier research universities of a country, su such as uh, Malaysia, for example, has five national universities. University Kebangsaan Malaysia, University Science Malaysia, University of Malaya. 
All of them are globally ranked. All the five national universities of Malaysia are actually ranked higher than the University of the Philippines. They are premier research universities. That's why they are given certain privileges and status as a national university. That's really the concern of the commission. Uh, so I think we have to go back to the objective of the bill. If the intention is to grant PUP significant fiscal autonomy, for example, so that they're able to generate funds through donations, give them the privilege of uh, getting uh, uh, similarly like UP, if you donate to the University of the Philippines, the one who donates gets 150% of the of the amount as a, a tax uh, uh, deductible. Uh, if that is the intention, we will support uh, granting fiscal autonomy to the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Uh, but we are concerned that if institutional autonomy is granted, uh, similarly, all other equally situated state universities are also require it. And we will have a problem, a practical problem, of enforcing compliance with minimum standards. Uh, the, uh, the special provision of the previous GAA and the proposed NEP contains a provision for CHED to ensure that minimum standards of programs in terms of faculty qualification, laboratories, in terms of uh, facilities are observed. And PUP still has many programs that, that do not have COPC. If institutional autonomy is granted, we cannot enforce minimum standards on the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. What does institutional autonomy exactly mean, Chair Popoy? Institutional autonomy means that they are exempted from the regulations of the commission. So, uh, Although we, you sit as chair. Uh, yes, we sit as chair, but it's now exclusively the board that decides. The position of the commission is that we can grant institutional autonomy to premier universities, those that have outstanding, uh, outstanding ranking, uh, outstanding research, so that we don't need to evaluate them because they have already reached a uh, SUC level or standard that is comparable with universities in the region, at least, or internationally. So there is no question about the quality of education in the University of the Philippines. Two questions, Chair yeah. Papoy. Um, who else has institutional autonomy aside from UP? Uh, basically, UP and Mindanao State University. And yeah. Because, Only two? Yes, basically two, although... Uh, the uh, creation of Batangas State University as a national engineering university basically says that they will have institutional autonomy also. Now, under existing law, can you declare the institutional autonomy of a SUC without any law being passed? Uh, when it reaches that level, as you mentioned earlier. Under existing law, no. We can do it with private universities because in private universities, once we grant them autonomous status, they are exempted from requirements of CHED. So there, in the private schools, there is a hierarchy that you can achieve, but we don't have that yet in state universities and colleges. The ones that grants institutional autonomy is... The Congress. Yeah, Congress basically is the one that grants it because Excuse it's a me, public Chair institution. Chair Popoy, Chair would like to acknowledge the presence of Senator Vinget Chalian. Good morning, sir. And thank you for your presence. Um, may we hear from the representatives of PUP um, who are online, I believe? Yes. Tinong Haharap. Dr. Mohi, sir? Yes, uh, good morning po, Senator Chis uh, Escudero, Chairman of the... Increase the volume. Hello? Yes, sir. Volume of mahina o volume namin? Hello, hello. Pakilakasan yung volume mo, President Mui. Hello, narinig na po ba ako? Can you increase your volume a bit more, sir? Senator Chis uh, Escudero... Chairman of the Senate Committee. Can you increase, sir, the volume of uh, your volume, sir? Mahina yung dating mo rito. Hello, hello. 
Hello po? Hello? Do you hear me na po? Mahina pa rin, sir. Hello, hello? Hello, sir? Atin ni kayo naman. Hello po? Hello? Better, sir. Yes, you may proceed, sir. Yes, uh, Senator Francis Jesus Godero, Chairman of the Senate Committee on Higher Technical and Vocational Education, Senator Winda Chalian, and other members of the Committee on Higher Education, and to our uh, Chairman of Commission on Higher Education, Dr. Uh, Popoy Rivera. Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. At maraming salamat po sa pagbibigay ng oras na mapakinggan ang aming uh, sintang paralan. Sa loob po ng 190 na taon na natiling matatag at totoo ang Polytechnic University of the Philippines sa kanyang mandato upang tuparin ang pangarap ng bawat kabataang Pilipino na makamit ang kalidad na edukasyon tungo sa pag-aangat ng kanilang mga pamilya mula sa hirap. Taon-taon po ay tayo ay nakakakuha ng higit na 200,000 na mga applicants para sa incoming Freshmen. Pero halos uh, nasa 20,000 lang po dito ang aming natatanggap dahil sa limitasyon ng budget. Sa katunayan po, ang kabuang population ng PUP system ay bumubuo sa halos 6% ng bilang ng college students sa buong bansa. Ito po ay ayon sa data ng Commission on Higher Education mula ng 2019 hanggang 2020. Ang mga estudyante po natin ay sinisigurado namin na bibigyan ng mataas na kalidad na edukasyon na tumatalima sa pangangailangan ng ating industry at ekonomiya. Taon-taon din po tayo ay nagkakaroon ng mahigit kumulang ng mga 15,000 na graduates na pumapasok at most preferred sa iba't ibang fields gaya ng business, financial operations, architecture, engineering, office administration, sales and related industries, educational instruction, library, computer and mathematical occupations, government service, at marami pa pong iba. At uh, galiyo na rin po sa na, uh, professional and technical positions, mga clerical and rank and file positions. And we take this with pride po, dahil ibig sabihin po nito, ang ating mga opisina at organization ay pinapalakad at pinapaunlad ng marami mga PUP graduates. Kaya naman po kami ay nagpapasalamat sa inyong lahat sa pagpapaunlak ng inyong panahon at oras na marinig ang aming hangarin na maging makilala bilang isang National Polytechnic University. Una po, gusto naming mabigyan uh, na maging National Polytechnic uh, University bilang pagkilala sa kakayanan makapagtala ng direksyon, plano, programa at pamantayan na siyang pangunahing basehan ng functions ng aming pagtuturo, mga academic programs, research and extension na may malaking ambag at nakatuong tungo sa national development. Ang PUP po ay kaisa at katuwang ng gobyerno sa pagpapaputi ng estado ng higher education ng bansa. Pangalawa po ay ang panawagan ng mas mataas na budget para sa buong PUP system. Ito ay para mas mabigyan ng opportunity na makapag-aral ang mas malawak na hanay ng kabataang Pilipino. At pangatlo po at higit sa lahat ang flexibility sa pagbubuo at pag establish ng mga programs na tumutugon sa pangangailangan ng industries dito sa ating bansa. Ang PUP po ang isa sa mga unang nag-offer ng railway engineering. Katuwang po natin dito ang DOTR, ang cooperatives, ang banking and finance, advertising, mga associate course at mga diploma courses na naka-align po sa TESDA at tumutugon sa pangangailangan ng industry at ina-address ang skills gap at iba pang courses dahil naiintindihan po natin kung paano tayo mas makakatulong sa national development. Ako po ay naniniwala, kami po dito sa PUP community, na ang PUP ay backbone of the Philippine economy. Kami po ang inyong mga teachers, researchers, analysts, computer technicians, developers, engineers, architects, accountants, mga bank managers, library secretaries. Kami rin po ang mga nasa frontline services ng iba't ibang kumpanya, opisina, bangko, mga tindahan. Mga PUP yan po na araw-araw ay tumutulong sa pagpapatakbo ng ating lumalagong ekonomiya. Kung may papatupad po natin ang National Polytechnic University, ito po ay magiging karangalan namin at ng bawat manggagawang PUP yan at magiging katuparan ng pangarap ng bawat kabataang Pilipino. So maraming salamat po. Um, 
Sir, I'm sure you heard what Chair Popoy said earlier, and may I pursue it? Um, Senator Sirwin, please feel free to interject whenever you you want to. What's in the name, Chair Popoy? So what if I call PUP a national university, National Polytechnic University? That does not automatically carry with it institutional autonomy, right? Uh, basically, it does. Unless we write it. Yeah, unless by law, you say they don't have institutional autonomy, no. but they have the name. Yes, when you say National Polytechnic University, yeah. that does not, there is no dictionary definition that automatically they will have institutional autonomy unless we say so in the law, right? Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chair. And as you said, in Korea, they have five national universities. In, in Malaysia. In, in Malaysia, Malaysia, sorry. Yeah. Now, um, President um, Moiser, um, Chair Popeye said some of your programs are not yet compliant with said regulations. He is basically reserving the grant of institutional autonomy to um, PUP because of that reason. Um, how do you comment on that, sir? Uh, sir, nung pong nagkaroon ng huling suk leveling that was in 2013 and 2016, uh, yung po yung naging dahilan kung bakit bumaba yung aming SUC leveling for le uh, from level 4 to level 2. Uh, yung po ay dahilan dun sa mga programs namin, sa mga branches namin or campuses namin. Dahil po sa aming pagkakaalam na pagka kami ay nag-offer dito sa Maine, sa Santa Mesa, ay carry na po yung uh, mga programs na uh, in-offer namin dun sa mga branches at campuses namin. Pero... Dahil nga po uh, may uh, COPC uh, na kailangan at uh, yung pong mga programs namin ay agad po namin uh, in-apply ng Certificate of Program Compliance. Sa katunayan po, lahat po ng mga programs namin sa, dito sa May at sa branches at campuses namin, kami po ay nakapag-submit na ng mga COPC. Ang NCR po ay merong mga 109 uh, programs at ang total compliance po uh, na inaibigay ng certificate ay 53. Meron pa pong pending issuance na 31. Ibig sabihin po, ito po ay nasa Commission on Higher Education. Doon po sa Region 3, meron po kami 16 programs. Ang, ang COPC po na 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 ng Commission on Higher Education ay 13. Yung iba po ay pending ang issuance. Sa Region 4A po, 65 ang aming programa rito. At uh, ang COPC issued po ay 11 and the rest po ay pending ang issuance. Sa Region 4B, meron po kaming limang programa at iniintay na lang po namin ang visit. Sa Region 5 po, meron po kaming five programs. Uh, iniintay rin po namin ang, ang, ang visit. Ang ibig sabihin po, uh, nung lumabas po yung SUC leveling at saka po yung pagbito noong 2019, Agad po kami tumalima sa pag-submit uh, ng COPC. Uh, bukod po doon ay yung sinasabing mababa ang aming passing percentage sa board exam. Uh, sa katunayan po ay ang PUP Sinabi po ay nagpo-produce po ng mga board top notchers. No? Nitong nakaraan tatlong taon po ay ang top notchers namin ay uh, 62. At kami po ay uh, kasama sa list ng mga board uh, uh, performance na mga sa top performing school po no even po ang mga branches and campuses namin ay sir, in sir terms just to correct you chair pope i did yeah. not say that pup had a low passing um average in board exams um let me do this i'll try to abbreviate the proceeding sir there is no objection on the part of chat that you be granted fiscal autonomy including the tax incentives that be correct yes he has issue and reservation with respect to institutional autonomy. So may I do this, um, since this is authored by our Senate President. And it's, um, basta hanggang strike two lang kaya, pag ito binito ulit, hindi ko na ulit take up into, ah. For whatever reason, <laughs> pag binito ulit ng bagong presidente, nakakadalawang presidente na kayo, um. But what I will do is this, um, and I hope Chair Popoy will agree with me. I will delegate to Chet the grant of institutional autonomy subject to compliance with the thresholds that they will establish and we will put in the law without need of another bill being filed granting institutional autonomy. Fiscal autonomy we will grant. Um, 
would that be um, acceptable, sir? Uh, Mr. Chair, maybe the uh, what happened with Batangas State University will be instructive when they. Uh, when the, a bill was filed to make them a national engineering university, what Chad uh, proposed is a special, is a provision in the law that says that when they become a national university within, I think, five years, they will make sure that their enrollment is really in engineering, basically. So they really become an engineering university. So the enrollment in engineering programs will be increased. And the enrollment in the other programs basically will not move so that indeed they will become an engineering university. They are predominantly an engineering university. And the uh, the other thing why, why Batangas State University bill moved was that their performance is really good. They are a level four state university. They have very good performance in engineering. Uh, the other concern with PUP is that you, PUP is not really a polytechnic university. They are a comprehensive university. They have a college of law, teacher education, etc. We may need to really reposition PUP as a real polytechnic university by making sure that the programs they push are polytechnic programs because it's a little... It's a little difficult to call them a national polytechnic university. If they have programs like mass communication, law, teacher training, etc. But because we really do need poly strong polytechnic universities in this country. So may I add that into the discussion, Mr. Chair? My problem, my problem with that would be. Pabalik na naman tayo, Chair Popoy, sa dati, di ba, na you should comply within five years to be a university. Tapos babalik na naman kayo sa amin dahil naglapse yung five years. I'd rather state certain conditions that if complied with, regardless of the length of time, then that's the only time that they will get in. Now, Mr. may I hear Chair? from President Mohi your comments, sir, with respect to, yeah. um, if you will, I think I agree with Chair Popoy that, um, if you want to be named a national polytechnic, then your courses should be focused on polytechnic. Um, what are your thoughts on that, sir? Meaning to say, closing down certain programs that have no relation to being a polytechnic university. Yes, sir. Actually, nag-evolve na po ngayon ang mga ang polytechnic. No? Uh, if you're going to look at the Seneca University sa abroad po, Sila po ay nag offer ng mga uh, legal, law, sub, uh, courses. No? Uh, ang focus po ng Polytechnic ay yung nag offer po kami ng applied sciences at saka mga industry-oriented and aligned programs. No? Ang curriculum po ng Polytechnic tulad ng PUP ay nakadesign sa pagpapaunlad ng skills and competencies ng ating mga mag-aaral. Ang ating curriculum po ay binubuo. Ayon ito sa pangangailangan ng stakeholders natin, kagaya po ng mga industry partners namin. No? Nung nakaraang buwan nga lang po ay kausap namin ang, ang presidente po ng association ng, ng, ng mga bankers, no? kasi po alumni po ng PUP, at uh, kinikilala po yung graduate natin ng uh, banking and finance. At yung banking and finance po ay isa po yan sa mga programang unang in-offer ng PUP. At bukod po doon ay... Kung pamilya po kayo doon sa Philippine Qualification Framework, ang PUP po ang sumusunod doon dahil meron po kaming uh, associate course na naka-align sa TESDA, ang diploma course na naka-align sa TESDA, at kami rin po ay nagpapatupad ng curriculum na naka-laterize. No? Uh, yung, yung ganitong klaseng pagtugon po ng pangangailangan ng ating education system ay sumasang-ayon sa PQF na nagsisiguro na yung mga graduates po natin ay uh, job ready at magiging globally competitive. Bukod doon po, yung Polytechnic ay nag offer ng flexible, continuing at lifelong learning tulad po ng PUP na kauna-unahan po tayong kinilalang nag-offer ng Open University. No? Wala pa po ang komisyon, ay meron na po kami pamantasang bayan na ito po ay sinimula ni Dr. Nemesio Prodente na ito po ay uh, pinakilala noong mga 1970s at uh, 
uh, naging Open University. Pangalawa po ang non-traditional studies na ito po ay unang inintroduce din ng PUP na naging ano po ng ETIAP. Sa katunayan po ay yung ibang mga senior faculty members namin ang ginagawa pong uh, mga consultants ng, ng commission po no, para dito sa ETIAP at saka sa Open University po. Sir, ulitin ko lang, and this is for Chair Bopay too. There is no law that defines, maliban sa dictionary, the meaning and import of adding national to the name depending on, it would depend on what we write in the law. Right? So whether we call it National University or not, it will still depend on the provisions we will write into this bill. Um, I can toy with the praise premier instead of national. Okay, <laughs> And um, there was a similar bill, um, Claire. Na alam mo na, didn't declare na national yung in schoolhan sa Mindanao. Polytechnic din yan, di ba? Ah, science and technology naman yun. Now, that was, that was held in abeyance on the floor because of an objection of, um, from Senator Pia Cayetano. And I believe it will be laid on the table and or archived until the end of this Congress, principally because of reservations that she had. But um, bear with me, Chair Popoy. I will include National University, Kesanga Premier, and let it ride on the floor and see if it will pass um, scrutiny by members of um, the Senate. Again, out of due courtesy to our Senate President, who is the author of the measure. Number two, on institutional autonomy, kindly work with us, Attorney Spocky, uh, or whoever you will assign, Chair Popoy, um, for the wording. Um, President Mui, we will not grant automatic institutional autonomy. Compliance has to be made first with certain um, CHED requirements, but CHED is empowered. We will empower CHED to grant institutional autonomy after compliance without need of going back to Congress. We will grant fiscal autonomy and the tax incentives that you asked for, additional members to the Board of Regents as well, um, but on the appropriation clause, sir, we will most likely just copy what is stated um, in the UP Charter, which is in accordance with the provisions of the General Appropriations Act. We can add the 100 million a year for five years um, and also add the provision on the use of, um, on the use of um, reserve funds, ba? Parangadan? on the use of unexpended balances. Um, and Chair Popoy, can you help us with the wording too? In so, in pinag-usapan natin dati, authorizing the university given, given free tertiary education. Na, to explain to President Mohi and those who are listening to us now, when schools, when SOCs bill the government under the Free Tertiary Education Act, Nakalagay doon, tuition P, di ba, library P, kung ano-ano pa. Um, we were not able to specify that in the law, but from our point of view, dapat i-unbundle, hindi na kailangan i-unbundle yan. You may be charging based on that, but when the money is given to you per student, lump sum na yun. So much so that you are authorized to use it through your board for whatever purpose you may deem fit, hindi yung library fee, pang library lang. Yung physical education, pang physical education, hindi. Lump sum yun because um, money is given per student by the government. So let's clarify that in this um, bill as well. I don't know if that statement may use unexpended balances as the board may determine is enough to cover that. No? Mr. Chair, the unexpended balances means... Uh, if there are items that are not used, uh, they are used for other purposes. But I, the Commission supports your position that starting 2018, when the national government started giving subsidy to state universities and colleges for students, 
the subsidy has no fiduciary character anymore because the student did not give the money. So it cannot be allocated only for that purpose. The money already comes from the national government. So the board can use it using parameters it will adapt. So let's state that here. And with the help of uh, Senator Gatshalian, we will pass a joint resolution which has the force and effect of law to this effect. Kindly help us with the wording too. So that beginning 2018, we can release basically the huge savings that most SOOCs have since the start of this law in 2018. Nakaramihan sa kanila daw, natatakot gastusin to dahil nga, naka-unbundle pa eh. So let's put that wording here as well. Um, in order to affect it, at least specifically for this particular, um, for this particular bill on PUP. Um, I won't assign this to a technical working group anymore. Kindly just submit to us the wording and um, if our legal um, staff um, and legis agree with the wording, we will so provide for that. And then as I said, President Mui, I will let the National Polytechnic University ride on the floor, but I will include it in the um, committee report. Senator Yuan, you want to say anything? Mr. Chairman, I have two uh, very basic questions uh, directed to Chad. Number one is for the education of this representation. What does, what are the features of uh, an institutional autonomy? What are the features? What are the benefits and features of this uh, autonomy? Uh, when a uh, state university uh, has an institutional autonomy, the uh, creation of programs, the establishment of programs, the standards by which these programs are established, uh, they are excluded already from the Commission on Higher Education. So, for example, when UP uh, develops new degree programs, they are not evaluated anymore by CHED. It is assumed that they do a good job because they have the necessary qualified faculty they have the facilities, they have the curriculum necessary. So we do not have any jurisdiction anymore on creation of degree programs. That's very important, Mr. Chair, because there are still state universities in the Philippines where the faculty are not qualified to teach those degree programs. But if a university has reached a certain level where they are recognized for their research, the standards for uh, faculty recruitment is very high, then uh, we uh, we assume that the programs are, are quality assured already. That's the most important element of institutional autonomy, uh, Mr. Chair. Uh, Chair Popoy, to, to put it simply, uh, a university who's declared, um, who, who has institutional autonomy can come up with their program, can launch a program, uh, come up with their own standards yeah. for that program, yeah. and implement yes. that program. Yeah. This is under the assumption that the university yeah. has high standards. Okay. And um, who now verifies if they have high standards? Uh, well, the uh, top universities uh, subject their degree programs to international accreditation. So they will do that on their on own, their own, on their, their own, own volition. Yeah. What yes. if they don't do it? Then uh, we cannot require them because they, they have institutional autonomy. So in other words, Chad will now take a step back. Yes. And uh, we will give the university full trust. Yes. That they will always comply with the standards. Yes. That is only given to two universities yeah. in the Philippines. Actually, that's yeah. my next question. How many UP and MSU. Yeah. Okay. Mindanao State. And what is our experience with those two universities? Ah, they, they, they are very responsible universities because... And MSU is a huge university. Yes. The biggest system in their, in their yes. country. Yes, because Mr. Chair, for example, the, uh, the requirements for recruitment of faculty in many of the colleges in UP, the minimum requirement to become a faculty is a PhD. In the College of Science, you cannot become a faculty member if you don't have a PhD. And a faculty member gets tenure or permanency, not just on publication, they must produce two other PhDs. Those standards are very high and very difficult to comply with. So the assumption is, 
if uh, the recruitment is that way, then you get qualified faculty. You don't anymore recruit faculty members with master's degrees. That's why the research of the College of Science of UP is very high because they are able to get only the best faculty members. That's the same with the School of Economics. The entry requirement is also a PhD. And in most other colleges of UP, that is the same. We don't have that in the other state universities and colleges. Does it go the same with MSU? Uh, MSU, yeah, M MSU, no, uh, but MSU programs are also very good in many of the campuses. Okay, but yeah. do they maintain the, uh, from my understanding uh, of an institutional autonomy uh, feature, is there's a, um, it's like a self, yeah. self, uh, self regulating, self -regulating yeah. um, uh, feature. And uh, you really give a lot of trust that yeah. the university will perform up to standards. Uh, with MSU, are they also doing the same? Are they up to standards? Do they also get validation from international organizations? Uh, for some of their campuses, like MSU Iligan, they have outstanding uh, performance for MSU Iligan. They're internationally ranked. Their research is very high. Uh, their uh, faculty complement is very strong. So it varies across the campuses of MSU. Some of the younger and smaller campuses need to be assisted to go up. But the top campuses are very good. Marawi and uh, Iligan and MSU Jensen have very strong, very, very strong programs. Sir, what is our experience on a system-wide basis? Is it, is it uh, benefiting... The students is it benefiting the community? I would assume that the institutional autonomy at the end, because it's self-regulating, uh, it's nimble, it's fast, yeah. and it can benefit the yeah. students because you will basically eliminate uh, bureaucracy yeah. and they yeah. can do it on their own. So, but at the end, it's the student that should benefit yes. from that feature. No? Based on your analysis and studies, MSU. Uh, uh, the, uh, are the students of MSU benefiting from that institution? Uh, Mr. Chair, MSU is <laughs> a unique uh, state university because by law, they are created specifically to address the concerns also in Mindanao. They have another mandate. They have a peace mandate. Uh, they have a mandate to address problems in Mindanao. So when we say are they a good university, the parameters necessarily would be different for UP and for MSU, because MSU has a unique character as a peace university, because it was established essentially because of the need to address uh, concerns in Mindanao and help uh, people in Mindanao. So that's another parameter that we have to include when we say, how do we assess MSU? I think the bottom line is, did it improve quality? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, have they maintained the quality or all throughout these years using their um, institutional autonomy feature? Yes, yes, Mr. Chair. MSU is uh, doing well as a uh, system or as a university. Uh, my, my last question, Mr. Chairman, I, I uh, had an opportunity to uh, meet with uh, Dr. Muhi, um, I think a few days uh, back, and uh, I understand that... Uh, there are PUP campuses that are legislated, that are created through law. And uh, some of them are, obviously, a lot of them uh, were created due to um, public clamor or due to the need in their community. How does that affect um, the self-regulating feature of an institutional, of institutional autonomy? How does it... Because if you have, my, 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 my thoughts there is, if you have campuses being created all over the nation, and then you are now self-regulating yourself, but you don't have any control in putting up satellite campuses. In fact, the, I mentioned to Dr. Mooney, uh, the more campuses, quality might, <clears throat> might be sacrificed because uh, the farther you are from your, the center, the the, the, the more complicated it is to manage and to regulate. So how does it affect quality, considering that some of the campuses are created through legislation that is beyond their control? Yeah, that's a good point, Mr. Chair. That's the reason why UP 
exercises extreme restraint in creating new campuses. The Board of uh, Origins of UP have adopted a policy for several presidents now that they will not create additional campuses because creating a new campus is a significant investment in terms of facilities, in terms of faculty, etc. It takes long before uh, degree programs attain the standards that are required for a national university. That, that's why UP, despite the clamor, is not creating additional campuses uh, because of what you said. No? Uh, it's difficult to recruit very good faculty uh, if you have a lot of small campuses. The facilities are needed. You need the library. You need uh, you need facilities for for wellness. You need facilities for sports, etc. And the investment required is significant. So if the investment is there, you will have pockets of uh, campuses where standards are not really very high. And when you rely on on young faculty that you recruit. They are not able to produce quality research, so your quality, your research output will also be affected because usually good research emanates from very strong graduate programs, and you cannot have strong graduate programs in campuses if your faculty are very young, if they are assistant professors or instructors. They cannot produce world-class research, so research will suffer also in those campuses, and your ranking will be affected because a major indicator in ranking universities is research output. Yeah. Because uh, well, it's, it, it's also a double-edged um, sword. On the other side, PUP has good reputation. In fact, uh, it's a choice of uh, most employers in terms of recruitment. But at the same time, uh, it... it uh, it seems to me that it, it is also the favorite of um, legislators as the university to expand in terms of satellite campuses. So, uh, so in other words, uh, PUP has a very limited degree of control in terms of expansion because it's Congress that is expanding it. So uh, uh, when, when you expand uh, even restaurants, but when you expand an institution, uh, you have to keep up with quality, you have to keep up with resources. But if you don't have that control of expansion, obviously you don't have that control of resources as well no? because you, don't, you, you can't plan. You can't plan. So my, my thoughts there is if you are now going to grant institutional autonomy, but you don't have control over resources and expansion, uh, that that leads to some complication. Um, uh, that, that, that's what my initial thoughts uh, on, on this matter. Uh, Mr. Chair, that's why the UP board has taken a very strong position that it will not expand uh, as a policy, and that has been observed over several presidents now. The most it, it could do is a small extension program, but it's not really a campus, uh, because you must have restraint, you know, and the board of UP has resisted any attempt to increase its campuses. Otherwise, we will have UP campuses all over the country uh, if uh, UP will allow it. So the UP board has to take a hard position. And maybe the PUP board should also take this position, Mr. Chair. It's very hard to uh, take a hard stand against legislators, <laughs> I think. Um, Usually, legislators want to create um, local SOOCs because it can bear the name of their father or grandfather. Um, UP and PUP has its own separate name that has nothing to do with their last name. The Chair, just as, as a last request from Ched, uh, please submit to us um, a study on MSU and UP uh, on the topic of fiscal, uh, on the topic of institutional autonomy. Uh, just give us, a, just educate us on how uh, institutional autonomy help them improve quality, help improve, uh, they help them improve quality, help the students uh, benefit from that improved quality and how PUP can also um, uh, benefit from institutional autonomy you know, and what are the constraints and what are the complications. Thank you, Mr. Chair. We will do, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, may I also raise a point? Can we also include the provision that we included in Batangas State University, that there must be a plan so that enrollment in PUP 
There is no, we have no pending bill, Chair. No, no, I mean a provision on the... Here? Yes. That, that, uh, that the enrollment must increase only in polytechnic programs. The other programs can remain as is so that they really become a polytechnic university. But if I heard President Mohi correctly earlier, um, I think you differ with respect to the definition of what polytechnic was, is, and will be in the future. Um, we'll subject that, we'll weigh it, kindly submit to us the proposed provision, and we'll get the input also from President Mohi and his team. Um, Chair hereby orders that um, Senate Bill number um, 2448, subject to the discussions and amendments um, agreed upon and discussed, is hereby approved and the committee secretary is instructed to prepare the corresponding committee report on the same so that it can be debated on, on the floor. So ordered. Um, let me dispose quickly, bear with me, of these test uh, training centers. Um, item number two, three, and five. Namely, House Bill number 9016, 9018, and 9037, creating a test training center. Similarly to what the committee did previously, are hereby approved removing the assessment portion. Unless TESDA tells us that there is no near or um, assessment center within a certain proximity or radius. In this case, hindi kailangan ng assessment to that law? Mr. Chair, um, may mga near assessment centers naman po with the places na... In with these three? Yes, po. So, training center lang yung establish namin, okay? Yes, Mr. Chair. Thank you. I'm subject to those qualifications and amendments. Um, similarly to what we passed on similar bills, um, siguro, um, Senator Wynn, pang 40 na yata namin itong establishment, so medyo... Ano siya? Um, parang sa uh, factory? Yes, ma'am. Attorney Balong. Uh, Mr. Chair, ang concern lang po namin dito sa uh, mag-head ng, um, ng training centers kasi po ang nakalagay lang sa bills ay administrator, vocational school administrator. But um, What bill are you referring to? All of the three bills in the establishment of training and assessment centers. Yes po. There is no provision providing for the staff who will be supporting. Um, we'll copy the same... Same bills that we approved earlier. All right. Well, no, the yan, Thank you. Thank you. Test na. Yun ang gusto nga nila. Ginagawa nilang under test na para test na magpondo at hindi yung LGU. Well, bahala sila sa Congress. Gusto nilang pondo nyo. Anyway, House Bill number 9016, 9018, and 9037 are hereby approved, subject to amendments and subject to the format and forms um, earlier established by the Committee on the Establishment of Test the Training Center. So ordered. Item number four, House Bill number 9019, the establishment of a Polytechnic Institute. Um, Chair refers this to a technical working group and kindly look at several things. Number one, pataangkin nila na sila ang Bicol Polytechnic University. Polytechnic Institute, eh, akala ko ba test the training center to? Pangalawa, um, it is headed by a mere superintendent and there's even no board and yet they're consolidating several of the training centers within the province of Catanduanes into one unit and the others merely as their quote-unquote campuses. I don't think this is a mere conversion of a cottage um, training center into a um, test the training center. Kindly communicate with the author of the measure in the house what his intent is. Um, ayoko nang i-bother si Chair Popo. Eh, gusto niya maging uh, Bicol Polytechnic. Eh. Eh, to begin with, how can it assist the entire Bicol region when Catanduanes is an island? I have no, con I have no reservations with calling it Catanduanes Polytechnic if they want that, but probably not Bicol. Um, Huwag muna natin bigay yung corona ngayon. Wala pa yata nakaka-deserve ng corona ngayon um, at this point in time. So, Chair, he refers that to a technical working group in order to iron out these um, concerns of the Chair and um, defer further consideration of this until after the recommendation with DWG. Now, moving to the more important... Ma'am, you're excused. Unless gusto niyo makinig at wala kayong gagawin iba. Pero okay lang din naman. Permission to leave for Mr. Chair. Unless nga gusto niyo makinig. <laughs> 
Thank you, Pa. Thank you. Now, proceeding on item one, and I thank um, the presence of, I thank Senator Wynn for his presence. This is the more pressing concern. Let me lay on the table the problem we are facing. Nasa na si Attorney Luz? Ah, di okay lang. Kung kailan natin pag-uusapan, ito naman umalis si Attorney Luz. I'll outline, I'll lay out my concern and problems, okay? And let's discuss it one by one. And again, I'm appreciative of the presence of Senator Wynn because this is a very serious problem that we're facing or we will be facing at the, ver at the very least by next year. Number one, in 2021 and 2022, Tama ba, Char Babay? download na yung pondo ng... 2022, Starting 2022, Mr. Chair. Dinownload yung pondo dahil sa kahilingan ng mga congressman, dahil delayed daw magbayad ang shed. True or not, I won't ask you to comment anymore. Pasalamat ka nga, di ba? Nawalan ka ng trabaho, nawalan ka ng dagdag sakit ng ulor. Dinownload diretso sa mga suks at looks yung pera. Sa suks lang, Mr. Suks. Chair. The looks are still pain by chance. My problem is this. Dinownload yung pera, may sariling computation ng DBM with the existing enrollment ha, of the SOC. But about 70% of SOCs thought it best to decide on their own and allow so many enrollees. In excess of the budget allocated by Congress for free tertiary education per SOC, now about 30%, 29% to be exact, followed exactly to the letter. Yung binigay na budget, yun lang din yung pina-enroll nilang estudyante. Now, 70% of the SOCs, to be exact, 71% exceeded it. Walang ceiling, walang limit. Dahil nga binigay na yung pera sa kanila dati kasi nung hawak ng shed, o hanggang dito lang kayo. Um, now, my problem with that is, if government pays for the balance, which is roughly 3 billion in 2022, and you're looking at 4 billion in 2023 and another 4 billion in 2024, hindi naman pwedeng balong na walang katapusan to. And you cannot be left to your own vices to decide that and all of a sudden, sisingilin yung gobyerno because it creates complications. Number one, kung binigyan ko ng pera ang isang ahensya ng gobyerno para bumuli ng isang kotse, in this case, para magpaaral ng isang estudyante, saan kumuha ng kapangyarihan yung ahensya ng gobyerno bumili ng limang kotse? In your case, you were given funding to enroll X number of students. Where did you get the authority to exceed that number? Fine, ang sasabihin sa akin, ang madalas sinasabi sa akin, ang dami nag enroll it. Hindi naman namin pwede tanggihan. I see that need. I understand that. But legally, technically, and accounting-wise, saan yung isa charge yun? At paano babayaran ng gobyerno yun? E sumobra kayo sa budget na binigay sa inyo. Again, if you tell me kulang yung budget, palagi naman kulang. Eh. Lahat ng ahensya, palaging kulang yung budget. Wala ka na magagawa doon. Talagang kulang palagi. Kung ano man ang pinropose mo, hindi bibigay lahat. Nandun na tayo. Um, I talked to some officials of DBM and COA, and it, it is an issue, ha? Kung paano yun babayaran ng gobyerno, saan it's a charge? Wala namang savings dito. And again, where did the authority come from? to exceed what government allocated for you by way of free tertiary education. And what about the schools that followed? So pag binayaran lahat yan, what's preventing the 29% of schools who followed to also follow what the 71% did? So I'll, I'll allow you to answer uh, later on. Number two, the Unifast Board not in the law, established a moratorium on tuition fee increase ending supposedly, ang bilang ko 2022 eh, pero ang bilang ni Chair Bobo 2023. Yung moratorium, December 31, 2023. Now, right now, each board is empowered to dictate their tuition fees per unit. I'll give you an example, but for the record. Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, 230 pesos, tama ba? Depende kung AB, BS, MS, o PhD. O kung AB, 100 pesos per unit. Cagayan State University, tama ba to? Piso per unit? 
Tama ba ito? Batana State College, 75 per unit. To as high as 250, 4,000 per semester at 160, 1,000 ang UP per unit, 325 ang University of Science and Technology, Southern Philippines. The point I'm driving at is, if the moratorium ends by December 31, 2023, and each state, university, and college will establish its own tuition fee based on what the board decides, ni hindi pa nyo ini-implement, hindi nyo sinabi sa DBM kung magkano yun, paano na naman tayo niyan? There must be a way to make, make, make the cost per unit uniform. Hindi pwede manghula ang gobyerno, ang DBM in particular, kung magkano iya allocate. For sure, kung sino yung enrolled na, dapat tumuloy na yan hanggang matapos. That's clear. At some point in time, DBM should allow you a certain increase given that our population is increasing per year. Okay yun. <coughs> But government, given that we're passing the budget already, on the verge of passing the budget, if, if the if the SOCs implement the new tuition fee scheme by next year, clearly may deficit na naman yan. Kasi hindi naman namin alam eh. Wala naman kayo sinasabi sa Kongreso. Wala naman sinasabi sa Kongreso. We cannot catch up with respect. So ang choice natin would be either to impose, to extend the moratorium again, or not to extend it, but from the budget's point of view, simply say, this is what we will pay as the cost per student. Until such time na mag-agree lahat ng SOCs, through PASOC, through CHED, na ito yung standard cost ng tuition fee para naman makabudget ng tama ang gobyerno. Um, we can insert a provision in the budget to that effect so that we don't merely extend the moratorium and tie your hands. But I'd like, to, I'd like to place on the record as well. Hindi naman porkit Ben Chingo naging 30 yung studyante sa isang klase, times uh, additional 5 na yung kailangan idagdag sa cost. Yung kuryente, pareho naman eh. Yung amortization ng building, pareho naman eh. Yung sweldo ng teacher, pareho din naman eh. Whether it's 25 students or 30 students. Make it even 35 students in that class. So it's not a one is to one correspondence. And last point, may savings kayo. And when I checked your books, it's in the budget, the average savings of SOX would be anywhere between 300 million to more than a billion. That's the pinakamalakita, Chair Bobo, yung mga 2 billion, ano, 3 billion. Yeah, 6 billion yata ang UP. Anyway, um, as discussed earlier, I don't know if you you were not yet here, Dr. Ronquillo. I think Attorney Luz was here. Since 2018, when pre-tertiary education started, money was being given you lump sum. Although you build government unbundled, di ba na library fee, kung ano man give it to fee. So you end up having huge savings and not touching the money because you're not spending for it. We intend to free that up. Kasi... Binigay na sa inyo ng gobyerno yun eh. Hindi naman kailangan pang library lang yan kung porkit yun ang binili sa gobyerno. Which goes to the next point and last point which is at some point in time we have to decide on the cost per head, per student para makabudget naman yung DBM para hindi na rin kayo nagkukulang. And this we have to address in the budget for in the proposed budget for 2024. So if I may ask um, Dr. Ronquillo, Attorney Luz, Saan kumuha ng poder, legal basis, ang mga SOC na nagpa-enroll ng sobra sa binigay na budget sa kanila ng gobyerno? And now what do you suggest? How will we, how can we charge it? Where will we charge it against? Please, sir. Either Dr. Ronquillo or Attorney Luz. Uh, good morning, Mr. Chair and honorable members of the committee. Others, first person. I think, Mr. Chair, I, I got your point. But... Uh, I would like maybe to invite anyone. The gap may lie on the projection which were not considered when we submit to DBM. According to the law, 1091, DBM must base their projection in the preparation of NEP or their budget on the NEP preparation 
from the projection which will be submitted by SUCs. That is very clear, Mr. Chair, on Section 4 of 1091. However, in many of the hearings that we attended, we learned that, let's say, for example, in 2024, just for the sake of example, DBM used the 2022 enrollment as basis, which according to the law, it must be according to the projection. That's one. Uh, Mr. Chair, we also have no express restriction or prohibition because from the very essence of 10931, once the student complied or satisfied the admission requirements of our SUCs, they can be admitted. So, and at the same time, Mr. Chair, those were pandemic days. So, had we not uh, accepted those students coming to our SUCs, baka po hindi nakapag-aral yung mga yun ngayon. Yun lang po. And uh, even nung suggest pa namin binibil, Mr. Chair, uh, enrollment naman po ang base yan sa amin eh. Even before the merito sa amin ng bayad ng pre-higher education, we just charge JED or UNIPAS the actual enrollment. Yun nga lang po, nagtataka kami, bakit nung dumiretso sa SUCs, kulang ang binigay. At the same time, bakit po merong SUCs na labis naman ang appropriations or labis ang allocation? That's one thing that bothers us. So I think, Mr. Chair, on that, on that uh, note on pre-higher education issue, that's what we can uh, immediately respond. Dahil ang humingi na ibigay diretso sa SUC, SUC din naman. You, you cannot blame said na sila nagsabing ganito, mas mataas kung sumaba. But I'll give you examples. Ha? UP nag-exceed noong 2022 ng 607 million mula dun sa inappropriate ng Congress for Free Tertiary Education. Um, bakit may result technological university na zero? Ano, masasama o gali nila, hindi nila pinayagan mag-enroll, mabubuti yung mga puso nito, mga skwela na pinayagan mag-enroll, lahat gusto mag-enroll. May sumunod, sir, eh. Yun ang sinasabi ko, may sumunod, eh. 29% followed the budget allocated by DBM, 71% did not. Now, if you're telling me that the basis is the law, na basta nag-enroll, uh, payagan, um, no. The GAA is specific. Yun yung budget na inallocate. Mababa man yun o mataas, eh, away niyo yung mga taga-DBM dito. Um, because we're given a cap. And you were given a cap too. And ang issue lang doon ay kung yung bata nakapag-enroll na, third year na, at hindi pinatapos. Yun, may issue ako doon. But if it is an additional student in excess of the budget given to you, Again, I ask, sir, what is the basis? Paano ko, saan yung chat, saan, naniningil kayo sa gobyerno ng balanse? Ano yung legal basis ng gobyerno ng bayaran? Because there is no item in the GAA that allows that payment. So, magyari, mangyayari dyan, correct me if I'm wrong, um, um, from DBM, accounts payable to. Meaning, ang lalabas dyan is, Unjust enrichment, neither pang is allowed. So magiging accounts payable to. You have to prove it and Congress has to allocate a budget for it either in 2024 or in succeeding years. Or pwedeng gawin ng gobyerno, basta babayaran namin 50% or 70% ng utang, take it or leave it. Kung gusto nyo maghintay pa na accounts payable na mabayaran, okay lang din, pero yung tatanggap, wave na yung balance. Eh. So there are several options. If only to settle the issue. Um, so I'll, I'll let DBM settle that um, in a while. But next, sir, I want to hear from you. Paano yung tuition fee? Hindi naman namin alam mo yun sa Kongreso. Wala namang nag-submit sa amin. I don't know kung may sinabmit kayo sa DBM. Ang projected tuition fee increases nyo given the lapse of the moratorium in 2024. Paano yun? Sir, please. Okay, okay Mr. Chair. Uh, before I get back to the one yung issue, before. Ay. Eh, okay. Pabalik ako lang po yung unang issue kasi talagang masakit sa amin yung unang issue. Sa so, sinasabi po ninyo, dapat kami sa aming enrollment, bumase dun sa cap or dun sa ceiling na ibinigyan ng DBM. Mukhang it's the other way around. 
kasi nahihilo rin po kami, Mr. Chair. <laughs> Sabi sa batas, ang pag-aallocate ng pondo ay depende sa production ng enrollees. Ngayon naman po, you are expressing that our uh, enrollment must be based on the budget allocated. So I think that is where the gap is lying. Sir, That's what I clarify. Ah. While that is what the law states, the total number, the total figure in real terms of unfunded mandates, meaning mga batas na pinasana, hindi pinopondohan ng gobyerno, probably is about 7 trillion, bigger than the ne next year's budget. Now, the legal authority to spend is through the GAA. You know, problem ko, ah, I, mean, I agree with you, there seems to be a gap. But again, sir, ah, why is it that 29% followed and 71% did not? I mean, nag-usap-usap pa kayo o bahala na si Batman, may masunurin, may hindi masunurin, di ba? Kung totoo kasi yung sinasabi niyo, sir, edi lahat sana ng schools ginawa yung ginawa ng 71%, pero hindi eh. May 29% na sumunod eh. Which proves na kaya naman pala eh. That's my... That's what I cannot reconcile. Apparently, you did not talk among yourself. Sana nag-agree na lang kayo na, Hoy, prepare tayo ha, para hindi tayo magkaiba. Eh, hindi. Please, sir. Uh, Mr. Chair, you know, we're also bothered. Bakit din po, meron namang labis naman ng appropriations. That's, that's also bothering us. May labis ang appropriation. Labis pa ang ibinigay ng DBM doon sa estudyante na mag-enroll. So that's also battering us. Sabi po ninyo, meron namang equal. Tama lang. And yun namang iba, ay medyo lumabis naman. Well, just to invite your attention, Mr. Chair. Noon pong 2022, ang per share natin ay 520 million uh, per share. Ngayon, ang uh, 520 million ang uh, 520,000 ang per year. Sorry, sorry. Ngayon, yung not covered is 421,000. Ang not, cover, not covered, based on our assessment, dun sa billable, kung hindi yung babayaran. Ngayon, because of that, only 100 million na lang po ang, ang, ang 100,000 na lang po dapat ang aming tatanggapin comparing to dating 520,000 na pressmen. So, Yun nga pong ibang issues is aming kinukwenta-kwenta based on what is given to us. Yung iba negative pa dapat because we have na students ang tatanggapin. Eh, kahit hindi na tumanggap ng freshmen, yung existing second year, third year, fourth year, kulang pa din yung pre-higher education allocation. So that's, that's one bothering us. Opo. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay, so uh, we are also looking at the disparity. Yung dati naming tinanggap na 520,000 students na per year, eh biglang magiging 100,000 na lang following the available appropriations. So I think uh, that is one thing na hindi namin din ma-reconcile among ourselves. Meron niya po, if we will be balancing this number and the average, eh yung iba yung negative pa. Sabihin, hindi na dapat tumanggap ng pressman. So that's one, Mr. Chair. And then, going back to the second issue regarding the amount or considering the moratorium. Just to update your Mr. Chair, ang um, tried kami po, SUCs, or even DBM, had conversations already. After, or even during, or even before the moratorium did up, hindi pa lang kami natapos. Matagal yang, matagal at walang purpose yung conversations. Ang gusto oh. ko malaman kung may agreement kayo. Wala pa po. <laughs> Wala pa po. We have scheduled the uh, consultations po per, per region. We agreed. No? Just to update you po on uh, up, uh, meetings that we had. Uh, we agreed that, kasi ang dami nang usapan namin across the board ba yan na dapat, let's say for example, 10,000 per students. How about yung nasa, nasa NCR? How about yung... Well, to answer directly, Mr. Chair, hindi pa po kami tapos. Okay. <laughs> yung agreement, hindi lang, gusto mo pa sakitin ko pa ulo nyo? Another issue with respect to this is if DBM takes the position na hanggang dito lang kami per student at yung in na tuition fee ng board nyo is X amount, why lang ang ibibigay ni DBM? What will now happen? Sisingilin ba nung suk yung balance ng estudyante? Eh, hindi na free yan. Di ba? Hmm. Pagiging accounts payable na naman ba? Parang yung nangyari sa enrollment? 
Pa, meaning you have to move forward on that. Now, I don't think we have enough time unless you can give me a computation of the approved tuition fee increases of all state universities and colleges, including LUCs, para ma-juxtapose natin sa proposed budget ng 2024 at kung gaano kalayo yun. Are you prepared to give us that? Uh, Mr. Chair, just to share with you our discussion para lang po meron tayong uh, idea about it. Ma, sangayon po sa inyong binasa, may SUC na maliit yung per, per, per unit. Meron dyan, let's say PUP, 12 pesos yata yun per unit. Yung iba naman ay uh, 200, uh, 200, 200 1,000 pa nga dyan, may 500. If we will, let's say for example, take it as a percentage, lahat tayo mag-increase mag, mag ng, uh, let's say, 20%. Eh, kawawa naman daw yung sobrang liit. Ang 20% yung maliit pa rin. Ngayon, kung i-average naman natin ang per unit, let's say, i-average lahat yun, kawawa naman yung mataas, let's say, 500 pesos per unit. Pag in-average yun, bababa ngayon ang kanyang uh, uh, tuition per unit, which he may not be able to sustain yung operations ng kanyang university kasi uh, ongoing na yung mga uh, infrastructure development and other things. So, medyo nagtatagal po kami sa discussion yan. That's why, Sabi ko nga, it's a question which even a dissertation may not answer. That's that, that's normative fund or normative tuition fee for, for all of us. Yun namang iba, taga island provinces, let's say, for example, ang mahal magpagawa ng kapital haul eh, kasi anya, yung delivery ng materials is... Double howling, triple howling. Yes po. <laughs> Kaya medyo, it's, it's really not easy to answer. Kung normative fee, let's say, for example, across the board, dagdagan natin ng tiksa sanda ang piso per unit yung mga yan. So I don't know how 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 DBM accept it. So there's there's really a very long discussion so, about it, Mr. Chair. Kahit ano mo pag-agrihan nyo, you have to remember, ah, all of the charters of the SOCs empower the board to decide on fees. So you still have to go back to each SOC. Yes, so you mag-agree kayo, ah? Apo. Na ito lang yung gagawin nyo. At hindi ko tatanggalin yung posibilidad na may isa, dalawa, sampu, dalawang pungsok na magsisinotel na magkasabing, hindi, although Chad sits there, but it's a vote yeah. in the board. Let me hear from DBM first, Dr. Um, Dr. Angilio. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Who is authorized to speak on the part of DBM? Uh, good morning po, Mr. Director Chair. Director Evangelista? Uh, yes, good morning, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Learning me yung pag-ipinag-usapan. Uh, yes, sir. Tapa. Uh, narinig naman po natin, Mr. Chair, po yung sinabi po ni President Rentilio from the PASOK po. Um, regarding po dun sa 29% po na sumunod and 71% po, um, uh, tama naman po kayo, sir, na bakit nga po yung question nga rin po yung tanong namin na may mga sumunod nga po na 29% at paano nga po yung iba na hindi naman po na may excess po na uh, enrollees. Um, so far po, uh, based po kasi, sir, dun sa last meeting po, last July 31, with you, Mr. Chair po, Na-identify po ng CHED na meron po silang 860 million po na continuing approved for the UACTE funds. On the part of the DBM po, we have already released po that 860 million. Yung pong uh, 430 ay para po sa free higher ed po ng SUCS. And then for the UACTE tertiary education subsidy, yung another 430 million. Na-identify din po uh, ng CHED po na meron po silang kakulangan po na 6.732 billion for 2020 po para po sa test for private HEIs. Ito po yung no socks no looks po, sir. In response to that po, the DBM released po uh, 3,834,780,000 nito pong October 2. So, nasa CHED na rin po ito, sir. Um, Nag-request din po, sir, ang CHED na tulong dunong for the tulong dunong program. Uh, however, sir, ni-return po namin to due to insufficient documents. Uh, for the remaining balance po ng SOCS FHE uh, na meron pa pong 2.7 billion, ang suggestion po namin, sir, kasi po, yun nga po yung tanong yun kanina, sir, kung paano po ba ito accounts payable po ba. Parang lalabas po kasi, sir, wala po tayong basis eh. Dahil wala po sa gaato eh. So, parang uh, deficiency po, sir. Declaration po na agency na meron po silang deficiency. In the SOC. Kasi hindi na dumadaan sa CHED yan eh. Yes po, sir. Opo. So, ang isang remedy po, sir, para doon po sa SUCS FHE po, um, may mga ongoing discussions naman po, na-mention naman po ni Chair Popoy about this one, pero wala pa pong finality. Uh, pwede naman pong i-charge po siguro ito, sir, sa CHED savings, 
income ng SUCS or sa HEDF po, gaya po na ginawa po natin dun sa UMAC na test po. Kaya na. Bago mo i-charge sa savings ng SED, eh wala na nga sa kanila yung pera, hindi na nga dumadaan eh. One. Two, let's clarify the figures. For 2022, the total so-called deficiency, correct me if I'm wrong, sir, two, is 3.254657 billion. Would that be accurate? Oh, I have the figure for school. M Mr. Chair? 3.254. Yeah. Ima minus ko, tama ba, ang 430. Yeah. That's where you got your balance earlier that you yeah. mentioned, the 2.7 billion roughly, ang deficiency. But that's only for 2022. Magkano sa 2023? Meron ako din. Binigay nyo. For 2023, the deficiency is 4.234186 billion. Giving a total of about 7 billion. 6 billion lang tayo nun po yan o. 4.2 plus 2, 4.2 and change plus 2.7 and change. That's roughly 7 billion for 2022 and 2023. Now, if we have an opportunity to address that in 2024, we will try to do that. Pero as you heard, DVM, they're looking at several formulas, not answering all. A portion of it, a percentage of it, and then free up your money na naka, nasa fiduciary fund ninyo to pay for, to pay for um, not really the additional enrollment because as I said, hindi naman yun one is to one, sir. Eh. Let's say isang klase nga 25 naging 35. Hindi naman, hindi naman yung kuryente yung binabayaran, pareho pa rin naman. Yung amortization, kung mayroon man kayo nutang, pareho pa rin naman. Yung sweldo ng teacher, pareho pa rin naman. Mas so, hindi naman sa one is to one eh. Although ang computation ng 3.254 billion at 4.2 billion is ganun, one is to one. Kailangan nyo rin mag-usap at hindi lang mag-discussion. Kailangan nyo mag-agree kung ano yun. And it will be on a take it or leave it basis. Meaning to say, if you accept the compromise amount, tapos na yan. If you don't, then go through the deficiency procedure. Ginawa yan dati ni PGMA sa LGUs, if you remember. Nagkaroon ng miscalculate, miscomputation, miscalculation ang, uh, ang uh, BLGF. So may claim yung LGUs. Sabi ni GMA, pili kayo. Um, Demandahan tayo, hulugan namin yung claim nyo hanggang mabayaran in 10, 20 years. Or Cash now, pero rediscounted. 99% of LGs, if not 100, accepted the cash now. Eh, para lang mas masala na yung libro, matapos na. Pero hindi 100%. I think ang discount doon, mahigit ka lahat eh. Sa land bank yun eh. Mahigit ka lahat yun eh. So that's an option too, ah. Wala lang yun. You can, we're not saying that you should forget about the balance, but you can go through the long process of trying to um, squeeze the deficiency from DBM or kung mag-offer nga ang DBM ng cash now, no more later, uh, that can be also perhaps considered when you talk. Chair Bapoy, you recognize sir. Just three points, Mr. Chair. First point, uh, on the part of Chad, we can only attest to the 2022 uh, claims because until 2022, we were still validating the uh, the uh, students. Yung 23, hindi po namin alam kung paano na compute yun. So yung una, no? Kasi transfer directly in 2022. So we still have data in 2022. Number two, the 3.2 is only for those that claimed. It is possible that there are SOCs who did not claim but have deficiency. So the 3.2 is the minimum deficiency. It's not the maximum. It is the claim, I think, of only 65. 65 uh, SOCs have claimed. No? So baka mas malaki, hindi 3.2. Uh, may mga humahabol pa kasi na may claims then. So it's actually bigger than 3.2. And number three, 
the reason why CHED was involved in the 2022, because there was a special provision in the 2022 GAA, na pag may sobrang pera sa yuwakte, not sa CHED budget, pag may sobra sa yuwakte, pwedeng i-claim ng SOOKS. Actually po, wala dapat sobra, pero merong na-delist na 19 looks. So money was freed up because they were delisted in the amount of 860 million and we divided it, 50% goes to public universities, 50% goes to private universities. So we ended up allocating 430 million. Most of this have been paid already to the SOOKs. We let PASOK decide how the 430 will be divided. They divided it as a percentage of the claim of the 65. We have released most of the money already. The others are ready for release. So before the end of the year, the 430 million would have been given to the SOOKs already. So wala na kaming accountability because there is no special provision in the 2023 GAA that CHED is involved. So just those three points, uh, Mr. Chair. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I'll try to help and uh, find a solution. But, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just want to backtrack a bit. No? Um, of course, in determining how much an S, how much uh, uh, how much a state university will get, is a formula of the tuition fee and the number of students. Diba? That's a simple formula. Tama Plus ba? the thirteen. Uh, miscellaneous fees authorized plus the by higher ed. Uh, plus the 13 mis miscellaneous fees. So it's a function of the number of students, correct? And it's a function of the uh, the computation of the tuition fee and computation of the miscellaneous fees. No? So um, I'll, I'll backtrack a bit, uh, Chair Popoy, and, and maybe Dr. Kilio can join in later on. Uh, is there a formula on determining tuition fees and miscellaneous fees as prescribed by CHED? Is uh, there such a thing? It was fixed at 2018 level. So the uh, current uh, tuition and miscellaneous fees when the law was passed became the basis for the reimbursement. But the tuition fees are determined by their own respective yes, boards. Yes, by their respective boards. And the, bo and the tuition fees are meant to defray operating cost of the school, just yes. purely operating cost, Yes, Mr. meaning Chair. CAPEX is not included. Yeah. But is there a prescribed formula? Let's say, uh, as you see, this is the formula when, when you plug in all the numbers, this is your tuition fee. Is there such a thing? There is no such formula, Mr. Chair. It was when I joined CHED, that has been the practice before. The board just decides what is the appropriate increase. Let me interject. Yeah. Hindi lang to maintenance, um, Senator Win. The board, in the exercise of its wisdom and discretion, can say, gusto namin magpatayo ng bagong uh, engineering building kung saan eh. So, ikakarga nila yun sa tuition fee. Remember noon, binabayaran niya ng estudyante so it's not merely to cover. It includes the plans and programs they may have um, in, the, in the future. And the question raised by Senator Winnescott, we had a long discussion, um, Chair Popoy and I, but the problem is the law gave it to the boards to decide it. CHED is not empowered to set a cap or a guide or, di ba, ang hirap eh na, pag law, ganito. Pag uh, biology, ganito. Pag secretarial course, ganito. Mahirap eh. Kasi sabi nga ni, director, ni Dr. Ronquillo, yung pagpapagawa ng building sa bundok, mas mahal sa pagpapagawa ng building sa syudad. So it's difficult. Um, but there must be, from the point of view of government and DBM, because you're still, comp according to DBM, kinompute na raw nila based on data from you in 2024. Tama ba yan? No, that's what they said. There's an increase in the number of students na babayar nila of over a million. Of over a million, ha? Huh? Am I correct? Three point, based na raw sa submission ninyo, about 3.1 million students ang babayaran nila in 2024. An increase of 1 million based on 2023, correct?
uh, Mr. Chair, just to clarify po, I think what TBM use is the baseline of 2022 in providing budget for 2024. Um, Director Bangalisa? Uh, yes po, sir. Ito po yung base. We base it po on the actual billing po, Mr. Chair. No, pero nag-increase na nga yun eh. Apa. <laughs> so kulang na naman yan sa 2024. Wala rin po kasi, sir, data po available for the 2023 po, sir. So far, when, opa, hindi pa po tapos po, sir. Wala Mr. po Chair. po kami na isubmit, sir. Chair. No, Uy. ang presumption ko dito, ah, on the part of DBM, you have to catch up with 2023 data and then afford for inflation or increase in population a percentage per year to each school. Hindi naman pwedeng nakaganon lang yun. Kasi may increase in population mo eh. You're talking population of increases of about 2.1%. So at the very least, it should increase it by 2.1%. In, in so far as number, as pointed out by Senator Wynn, it depends on the number of students. So kung ano man yung 2023 nila, at least plus 2.1% for 2024, so on and so forth. Hindi pwede nakapeg sa isang taon two years ago. Kulang na naman yan. May problema na naman tayo next year. Again, the principle should be, pag pinapasok mo na yan ang first year, subject, may mag-graduate din naman eh. Dapat makatapos sa at yung increase of enrollment nakapeg at a certain percentage that schools can expect already. Yes, Director Banglisa, please. Sir, we based it po on the actual 2022 po enrollment po. Kasi sir, kung makikita po natin, meron po tayo 18 billion 741 million po for the 2023. So na-address na rin naman sir kahit pa paano po. Ito again 21 billion 697 million na po yung for 2024. So na-increase po na 3 billion po sir. But that's based on 2022 enrollment. Mm -hmm. Tataas eh. Um, I just... Intervene, Senator Wynn. Um, Mr. Senator Chair. Sorry. Um, no, no, Mr. Chairman, that, thank you for that, that inter interjection that clarifies many things. Uh, my, my point, Mr. Chairman, is um, uh, I want to uh, ask the help of Chad to study the issue of how tuition fees are derived. No? Uh, because I'm trying to recall my stint as a local chief executive, and, and the chairman is also a former governor. I remember when we were managing our local university, Pamatas and Luzon, Valenzuela, the tuition fee there was based on operating. So the agreement there is very simple. The school tuition fee should pay for electricity, water, uh, uh, professors, and your daily operating. The LG will take care of all the infrastructure. Just give us a five-year plan. So meaning you don't embed the infrastructure as a factor inside your tuition fee. No? But that is taking a cue from the autonomy of the local government. We can, we can determine uh, how much tuition, what is the formula of the tuition fee. But uh, I'm, I'm citing an example now on how we derive the tuition fee. Um, I know that SUCs will have different formulas, as what the chair said. Some of them will have Probably we want to build, let's say, a laboratory and they need to factor in that in their tuition fee. Um, but I think the basic concept of a tuition fee for the purposes of free higher education is to at least cover the, the operating expenses of running a university. I understand that in terms of capital expenses, in terms of um, investments, most of it are derived from the General Appropriations Act. You know, at, at least majority of it is derived from that. You know? So in other words, we cannot factor in that anymore in the tuition fee because national government is giving that as a form of subsidy. Now, I want to help seek the help of Chad in terms of let's study and, and unpack the tuition fee of state universities. How is it derived? You know? So that we will have an understanding of how tuition fees are derived. And maybe, maybe, come up with a uniform formula so that ipa-plug in na lang ng mga state universities. And that's the tuition fee for the purposes of um, free higher education. After the moratorium, I can see the problem of the chairman. After the moratorium, the tuition fees will explode. Will explode. 
you'll have the tuition fees that are maybe a thousand for students. Do we have a tuition for maybe ten five five thousand per student? It will explode. That will create problems in the budgeting. So I'm not um, seeking for an answer right now, but let's study this. And maybe later on we can propose an amendment that a formula should be used in er in, in order to determine the tuition fee for purposes of free higher education. So I'm just thinking out loud, Mr. Chairman. I'll answer part of the query of Senate of Senator Wynn. Um, Director Esteves, um, Congress did not impose the moratorium. It was the UNIFAST board through a resolution that said that there will be a moratorium in tuition fee for five years. Right? In the IRR. So I cannot amend an IRR by a law. So kung ye extend man yung moratorium, it's the UNIFAST board that can and or should do it. That's one. In the budget, Senator Wynn, we can also provide that for DB, from DBM's point of view, whether you pass that resolution or not or amend the IRR, this is what we will pay based on 2018 tuition fees. We can say that too, but ang magiging problema ko nga is, pag walang moratorium at nag-increase yung mga board ng SOC, paano yung balance eh? Baka singilin nila sa estudyante, mukha tayo pare-parehong sinungaling na hindi na pre. And what's preventing the SOCs from doing that too, unless we provide in the special provisions of the law that if you accept the subsidy using 2018 tuition fees, then you cannot and should not collect any differential. Last point. I had a long discussion, Chair Popoy and I, with um, DBM, with Secretary Mina. Um, magtawara na lang kayo, magturong yan kayo. Um, again, a condition upon DBM will pay now, not the whole amount, but the percentage of the amount Ang, 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 ang unang tawad kalahate, hindi, yung 50% at least magsabi ka ng 70 o 80, mag, dun, at least may direksyon yung pinag-uusapan nyo. And then we free up in the GAA your fiduciary funds so that you can use it for whatever purpose you want kasi nga lump sum na yan eh. Hindi na dapat may fiduciary for the 13 miscellaneous fees na naka-bundle pa, na hindi nyo nagagalaw. That's why most SOCs have a lot of savings eh, sa, sa balance sheet nyo, na year in, year out nandun, hindi nagagalaw. Sayang naman yung fiscal space. Di ba? Tandaan nyo, ang ballpen next year, mas mahal sa ballpen this year. Ang building next year, mas mahal sa building this year. Laboratory equipment next year, mas mahal sa laboratory equipment this year. Definitely, the inflation is higher than what it's earning in the bank. So sayang yung pera eh. That can be the middle ground that you can agree on and we can look at and hopefully be able to address it in the proposed GAA for 2024 already. Now again, we're at 7 billion. Huh? We're at 7 billion right now for 2022 and 2023. Diba? Since binays na naman nila sa 2022 enrollment, you're looking at 4 billion again for 2024. Roughly. Give or take. Diba? But roughly, 4.2, 4.3 4 billion again for 2024. Huh? For 2024. 4.16. Um, so, haharapin na naman natin to at until such time that you're able to find a mechanism whereby it's based on actual enrollment plus an increase nga every year. Yes, Dr. Ronquillo. Sir? Um, Mr. Chair, I saw the wisdom of your recommendations. Uh, first, just to express our side, as you see, we are in many fora or discussion as of our savings. Just to clarify, Mr. Chair, it is not savings because it is already appropriated by the board. It is not a sleeping money. But according to you, yes, you are correct. Let's say, for example, we are charging dental and medical fees. 
there is a certain appropriation in this year. We know that it will not suffice because it's not yet, let's say, for a building, it is 20 million, let's say, for example. For this year, we cannot spend it to other purposes. So it is, quote unquote, parked there as a building, which is, let's say, for example, 5.8 million. So because of that, we cannot, we cannot spend. That's why lagi pong lumalabas na may ganun talagang ang tingin natin ay savings. But it is not savings. It is already a problem with the board. But if so, there will be... Opo, oh, 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 we are waiting. Kaya ho, yung iba naman talagang hindi na-implement for one reason or another. Nagkapailo ng bidding, which we cannot control. May mga issues nga po na talagang very painful sa 9184. Meron niya limang pailo ng bidding and sometimes more than even five. Anong porsento ng savings nyo, quote-unquote, ang tinuturing fiduciary na hindi nagagalaw because it's considered fiduciary given the 13 different types of yeah. fees that you so, collect from students supposedly that government is now paying? Uh, we have to check and determine, Mr. Chair, but we can provide you for the figure. Yes, and we will, on our part, we will free that up. Yeah, yeah. We will free that up. Ngayon yung appropriated na na iniipon pa hanggang uh -huh. makompleto, wala kami magagawa ng decision ng board yun eh. Yes, Mr. Chair. But I'd be interested to find out what that percentage is. Mm -hmm. Sir Baboy? Mr. Chair, some of the SOCs have fiduciary funds uh, predating 2018 that has not been used also. Naipon-ipon na ito. Uh, based on the collection from students? Yes, fund. yes, yes. Ang position ng CHED yan... Wala na rin fiduciary character yan because nag-graduate na yung estudyante. So yung kanyang kinontribute for medical, he cannot use that money anymore to get medical services because he's out of the school. So that may be also an issue that can be resolved by a special provision to free up even the pre-2018 fiduciary funds. We'll insert that, we'll insert that in the budget. Pre-2018, eh? retroactive valid. Yes, sir. Mr. Chair, if we can free that up, let's go back to the initial figure, 50%. Uh, we are into agreement as to how much will be paid. Pero let's negotiate. Huwag naman po 50%. Bahala na nga. Kasi sabi na touring nga yun eh. <laughs> Sige. Oh, 95% okay na, Mr. Chair. Kasi yun naman yung tawad mo. Yun yung touring niya, yun yung tawad mo. Magigita rin kayo sa gitna niyan somewhere along the way. Again, ha, the... The uh, alternative is this will be considered a deficiency and you will go through the process, including COA, including fiscal space on any given year, huh? compared to arriving at an agreement and getting whatever you can get already. I mean, I know it's not ideal, but we are in this situation already where government hands are tied to. They cannot provide for everything and anything. We're trying to correct it, but I guess in 2024, we still cannot because it's based on 2018. Unless we can look for additional four billion, and unless you can give it to us before we resume on November six, the actual enrollment ng 2023 per soak. You can. Actually, po na kasabit ng mga projected sa kanila, kasi they always asking project enrollment. At dahil ito nga po na sa batas. No, actual mo na tayo. Actual we can give. enrollment for 2023 per SOC. Mm -hmm. And then Congress, in the exercise of its wisdom, will provide for a percentage increase next year. Kasi kung 4 billion ang pinag-uusapan natin, kaya naman siguro hanapin yun. Yes, Mr. Chair, we are. We can Mas submit po. Para maiwasan na natin yung nangyari in 2022 and 23 and hopefully be able to avert it in 2024. This is also my uh, comment din po sa Congress while we are having hearing like this. Eh, kung wala talagang budget, bakit merong appropriation sa capital outlay? Sana man lang. Eh, di unahin na muna yung deficiency before we can give capital outlay to issues. That's a simple observation, Mr. Chairman. Ah, pwede kong gawin yun. <laughs> Pinapadali mo yun. Tatanggalin ko yun at ilalagay ko dyan sa 4 billion nyo. Not... <laughs> Uh, this is not the the uh, the meaning, Mr. Chair. But kasi ang sabi, wala daw pera before. Wala ang pera eh. Hindi sustainable yan. But, but meron kami din. Sa no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. I will go on the record by saying I completely disagree with Secretary Zocno. All he's thinking about is investing in capital outlay, not in human capital. Um, that is completely wrong. Um, 
255 billion ang lintik na sorry ang utang na loob na pondo ng flood control ng DPWH ang free tertiary education nasa 20 billion at even at even 10%. Tapos yung paimpopuntiryahan niya at hindi yung flood control. Excuse me naman para mali naman yata yun. Yata makatarungan yun. Again, I have no qualms about investing in the human capital of the country. Um, equally important is infrastructure, but more important, in fact, would be the human capital of the country. And this is an investment in the country's human capital. So we will find the funds. Um, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I, I, uh, I can see the... Uh, that the chairman is trying extremely hard to <laughs> bridge the gap in the short term. But uh, once, uh, let me reiterate, once the moratorium is gone, we'll see uh, a much more uh, complicated problem. So let me seek the help of uh, the chair to study this matter. Now, I, I think we can, we have to look at this in a very systematic way. Uh, look at the formula, look at how is it determined, and suggest to us how to move forward. On a separate note, Mr. Chairman, on the topic of student enrollment, no? because there are two, two things, no? the fees, uh, three things, tuition fees, miscellaneous fees, and enrollment. Uh, anecdotal lang naman to, no? but uh, the increase in student enrollment, does it mean that more students now are passing the entrance exam? Is that what, what we are saying? Or are we also uh, accommodating more students by lowering down the passing grades of SUCs. Um, I hear some stories about lowering down the passing rates or the passing grades in order to accommodate. Uh, the stories that I hear, the anecdotes that I hear is because SUCs are now more open in accepting, uh, their direction is to get as many students as possible. So again, I would like to seek the assistance of Chad to study this, whether are we saying that more students are passing the entrance exam now? Because more students are taking the entrance exam, therefore more students are passing, therefore, and then the end result is more enrollment. And that's why the SUCs are seeking for more budget to accommodate that big enrollment. Or are we seeing SUCs lowering down the passing thresholds to accommodate more students? I don't know. I, I don't know the answer, but that deserves another round of um, study so that we can be enlightened. Um, okay. Before you respond, Chair Popoy, um, we also had discussions along those lines, Senator Wynn. The special provision, in fact, we already have a draft day. The, the special provision basically states that SOCs and LOCs should have an agreement with said with respect to rationalizing and DBM, with respect to rationalizing the tuition fee as you suggested earlier, kung OPEX lang ba talaga, or no. And until such time that you come to an agreement, with or without the Unifast Board moratorium, extension of the moratorium, we will continue to base it on 2018 until to force you to, to come to an agreement para kung may increase, de, rational naman, reasonable yung increase. Sorry, but mo ako bayo po ang kurita. Wala naman yung po ang um, And we will also put a provision that if the SUC accepts the subsidy based on 2018, correct me if I'm wrong, Chair Boboy, hindi minagsabalan ba? Um, hindi sila pwede maningil sa estudyante nung balance kung increase man nyo kung hindi i-extend ang Unifast Board yung moratorium. Which brings me to the point na ano bang gagawin nyo? I-extend ba nyo yung moratorium o hindi? It's only in your rules and regulations. You can easily we don't need to pass a law. Neither do I want to put that in the budget. Ha? Yung moratorium. I can say that we're basing the computation on 2018 levels but I'm not prepared to write in the law a moratorium. It's not, it has no place there. Mr. Chair, if the special provision requiring CHED and DBM in consultation with the SOOCs 
shall issue a joint circular on how tuition fee increases will be computed, etc. There will be no more need for a moratorium. Because effectively, as you said, until an agreement is reached, the computation is 2018 level. So yes. we, we don't need to extend it, but it will force uh, an agreement on how it will be done. So that's why the Unifast Board has not taken it up. The preference of the Unifast Board is the special provision in the 2024 GAA requiring CHED, DBM in consultation with the SOOCs to come up with guidelines on what is the appropriate way to compute the uh, tuition fee increases that will be applied. And until such an agreement is reached, 2018 levels and basis ng reimbursement. We will do that for yeah. the budget of 2024, Sir Popoy. But the issue there is, what is the effectivity and applicability of a JMC to the powers of the individual boards of SOOCs in de determining the tuition fee that they would want to impose. Fine, from the point of view of the budget, ga ito yun. But still, how do you impose that JMC on the will of each and every board? Well, if uh, the special provision is part of the ga, there is a legal basis to tell the boards, which is chaired by CHED, that we cannot increase it in deference to the mechanism that has been incorporated in the law. So we will take it upon ourselves as chair of the boards of the SOOCs to say we cannot discuss this in the board because a joint circular is being drafted. It, actually, in the case of my SOOCs, even if the board keeps on saying we should increase tuition, even if there's a computation, what we say is, we cannot do that because we don't know if DBM will allow that increase. So we said, you know, just send it to DBM if DBM will agree with it. So none of the boards that I chair uh, has actually effectively said there will be a tuition fee increase. Sir, kindly convey, Dr. Okil. Now the ball is in your hands. If you want an increase, then Politinio Nang said, Mag-agree kayo with CHED and DBM on the rational basis, reasonable, sustainable, and um, accept, no, not really accept, but uniform basis for increasing tuition fees. As you said, kulang ang dissertation dito, kailangan dissertation dito. But now, uh, we're informing you that we will base it on 2018 levels with or without the moratorium until through a dissertation you can arrive at a just and justifiable um, computation knowing for a fact na hindi na pwedeng babaan yan. Ang UP nga 1,000, may 25, may 300, may 200. Ede, let's start with that assumption. Hindi na pwedeng baguhin yan, babaan. It can only go up. Now, it doesn't have to be a singular increase. It can be an increase in the course of time para ma-project na rin ng DBM yung kailangan. Di ba? Hindi naman kailangan one time lang yan eh. The increase can be on a, a, a percentage across several years. Di ba? Pwede naman yun eh. Tapos tigil ulit. Tranche na, tigil ulit. Tranche ulit. Meaning, come to an agreement ulit. Who knows if the economic situation of the country improves or deteriorates? We don't know. But let it be an agreement for the next five or ten years. Probably five years. Every five years, let's revisit it. Parang planning din ng DBM, Director of Anglisa, di ba? Every five years then. But we'll get the figures for you. Ah. Submit it to us, either to me or to Senator Pia, who chairs Tamabawin. Senator Pian, who chairs the subcommittee of the Committee on Finance handling uh, CHED and tertiary education, SOOCs in general, para ma-factor in na namin, maiwasan na natin yung nangyari ng 2023-2022 sa 2024, at least clean slate tayo doon, at yung pagtatawaran nyo na lang at magtuturingan, 22-23 na lang. You're referring to enrollment for this 2023 actual? Yes, okay. actual. Yes, Mr. Chair. Actual 2023 enrollment, which will ex extend until 2024, because school year, yan, di ba? 
Mag-enrollment na naman sila ng August o June. Ewan ko kung ano sinusunod na ninyo ngayon. Nalilito na ako. Um, and then we'll provide for a percentage. Minimum should be the population increase per year. Minimum, ha? So if you're talking 2.1, 2.3% population increase, then that should be the minimum increase. But initially, we discussed, why do we discuss 5 or 7%? Mr. Chair, that came to our discussion because there were some SOCs which increased their enrollment by more than 20% during COVID. So we wanted to sort of cap well, it a little extraordinary lower. Extraordinary yeah. circumstances. So pwedeng mas mababa na kasi wala so na. So we're looking at definitely COVID. above population increase and we had initial discussions of 5 to 7% increase per year. But it will still be based on actual. Based pa rin on actual yan. Ha? So not the whole amount the whole amount of the previous year will be increased, will be released, but the increase in differential will be based on actual enrollment already. Diba? Fair. Meaning kung konti nag-enroll, eh, hindi na release yung balance, eh. pero may buffer na. Based on projection na. But ikaklaro na rin namin, sir, ah, Dr. Rogilio, you cannot go beyond it, ah. Kasi may allowance na for increase eh. You don't have the authority to enroll more. Hayaan mo ng Kongreso to bear the brunt when you turn away students. But the problem is we cannot, hindi pwedeng balo na walang katapusan eh. Kasi pabalik din naman tayo sa 2022-2023 problem. Now if there are certain areas, and I hope Chad will help us with that. If there are certain areas na siguro nag-migration, di ba? talaga nag-increase in excess of the window for increase given and inform Congress the year before that that is an occurrence so that we can adjust also. Because migration is constant and uh, is constantly happening in different parts of the country. So baka may bumapa din naman. That's what I, that's what the yun sinasabi, Director Evangelista ni Dr. Ronquillo eh. May mga sok na sobra-sobra yung binigay ng DBM, may sok naman na kulang. Kasi binis nga sa previous year's enrollment, na bumaba naman yung enrollment. Is that what you're saying, basically? So let's insert a special provision too, that it's based minimum on actual enrollment and any increase will be based on, the increase will be released only upon proof of actual enrollment. Whether it's in excess or below, ah? Yes, sir. Uh, this is in response uh, to the observation of gentlemen, and also to your uh, point. On the apprehension that we can accept as many as we wish. In fact, Mr. Chair, this year, we actually based that only in our absorptive capacity. And the good uh, senator is also pointing out, baka nagbaba ng, ng ano, yung iba ng uh, admission requirement. Saan ba nagbabasit talaga? Just a case in point, Batangas State. Ang, ang nag-apply po sa amin na pressman this year is 30,000 mahigit. Ang natanggap po namin, Batangas State University po. Ang natanggap lang po namin is around 12,000. Yun ba ay anong basis namin ng pagtanggap? Actually, ranking na po. Kasi kung percentage, papasa sila lahat, hindi naman kasi sa aming classroom. So, ang ginawa na lang po namin, nirang kung sino yung highest. So, yung mga hindi namin itanggap, not necessarily bagsak sa, sa exam, but mas mataas yung nauna. So, in other resources, I cannot speak for them, but I don't believe na nagbaba sila kasi we warned them already. Ang matatanggap lang natin more or less is this cap. We learned in 2022-2023, which we beg your indulgence kasi nga po pandemic at wala naman kami sa classroom. Kaya hindi na in ang aming uh, absorptive capacity. So ngayon, uh, we are really observing, Mr. Chair. Thank I you. See, I, see, I see the point. So additionally... I know it doesn't go through you anymore, Chair Popoy, but can you consolidate that data again? Based on migration in excess of the yearly increase, um, inform us. Based on carrying capacity, kung binuusan ng pondo yan ng isang congressman o senador na dadagdagan ng classroom, nag-increase yung carrying capacity. Di ba? Mas malaking percentage yung sa school na yon than the general 
increase per year na i-allocate um, natin. And um, on the opposite side, kung may bumaba ding enrollment, para ma-reallocate natin. Because at the end of the day, governance is about allocating scarce resources. Um, para mabigay dun sa mas malaking enrollment, yung kukunin natin mula dun sa bumabang enrollment. Hmm, para tayo na dissertation <laughs> Chairman, me, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I want to ask Dr. Enriquillo, based on your experience, uh, Dr. Enriquillo, pre-free higher education and after free higher education, how many students, how much is the increase in terms of the number of students taking the entrance exam? Roughly lang, uh, roughly, uh, just to give us a sense of um, how many students uh, took the entrance exam. Uh, as of now, po, I cannot give you a ballpark, but more or less just for sake sa Batangas state kasi depende ho sa region kunyari itong Calabarzon maraming tao dito opo kaya medyo mataas diyan ang average sa Batang sa amin po no siguro mga 25% diyan ang, ang increase but there are regions na hindi na masyadong marami population maliit lang po ang increase kaya in our case mga more than more than around 20% po ang ang percent Batangas State is considered a big university in we, Calabar zone so we enrolled now more than 60,000 so students that, po. I would assume 20% is on the high side yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe the smaller universities what maybe 5%, 5 oh, yeah. around so between 5 to 20 more yes, or less po. yes po. more or less I, I think the natural occurrence will be lumaki rin yung pumapasa because there are more who take the entrance exam, the probability of passing also went up. Uh, just to take your, your side, Mr. Chair. Katulad po ng pandemic, uh, meron kami mga winave, halimbawa. Ang basis namin ng acceptance is, hindi, ibig sabihin, hindi, grades at saka yung entrance exam. Ngayon, nung entrance exam, hindi sila nakapunta sa eskwilahan dahil hindi nakakuha ng exam dahil pandemic nga. What we did, imbis na two years average nung high school, grade 11, grade 12, ginawa namin grade 9, grade 10, 11, and 12. Yung in-average namin, that is the basis of our admission. Just to compensate yung admission exam. Kaya po medyo iba ang sitwasyon natin nung pandemic. But now, we are normalizing Pwede everything. Talaga ngayon eh. Kaya yung jump sa enrollment was unique too, I think, at that time. But for the record too, sir, that's why there's tests. May carrying capacity naman kasi talaga ang suksi. It's okay to turn them down if it is already in excess of your carrying capacity and quality will already suffer. That's why there's tests. They can enroll in private institutions who are the partners of government in providing education to our people para dun sila mag-enroll. And from the point of view of these private schools, Although ginawa ni Chair Popoy na 20 mil na lang yata to accommodate and cover all those um, na dapat mabigyan ng test, still, it would have been zero from the point of view of the private school. Might as well accept that, kasama na sa kawang gawa, um, tanggapin na nila yung 20 mil mula doon sa estudyante yun kaysa wala. At yung mga classroom nila, konti yung laman. And yet, they're paying the same overhead. So, we try to balance it off through that too. At the end of the day, again, DBM kindly take note, it cannot exceed and kindly submit to us too the carrying capacity of each soup, if you have it. Um, para factory ng DBM din yun, that whatever increase cannot exceed the carrying capacity of the school. Huh? If there is such a computation, do you have one, Turbo Boy? Yes, uh, yes, Mr. Chair. We have carrying capacity indicators. Ang naging problema kasi nung panahon ng pandemic, you cannot impose the carrying capacity because flexible learning eh, naka-online ang madami. Agree. That's why right after the pandemic, we imposed a maximum of 75-25 face-to-face for public universities. For private, we were more flexible with them because they invested in technology during the COVID or some of them even before COVID. But for SOOCs, we increase the percentage that should be face-to-face. -face. nagalit sa amin. But that is to capture the carrying capacity also. That's one reason why we said 75% kailangan face-to-face. -face. Chair Popoy, 
Dr. Angilo, nothing prevents the schools post pandemic from following the same things that we learned during the pandemic, if only to increase the carrying capacity of the school. Diba? Hindi naman porkit wala ng pandemic, we forget everything we learned from that time. We can still do that. That's why what I need from the school is, if indeed you have a program along those lines, na may virtual, may ganon, may ganyan, then give us a figure of the carrying capacity of each soup. Uh, Mr. Chair, you're correct po. Uh, as of now, hindi lahat sa amin po mapasok. Let's say for general education, pwedeng, let's say, alternate. But those who are taking technology or engineering courses that is love, talagang full face-to-face. -face. Kaya po kahit ngayon, meron pa rin kami blended. Not because of pandemic. Okay lang, but your, your computation of carrying capacity should factor that in. Okay, thank you. Ikaw na mag-set ng meeting sa tawaran ng DBM at ng pasok? Basta may special provision, Mr. Chair. Meron. So there's a legal basis for us to sit down. That's what we'll do, ha? In the budget, that's what we'll do. All that remains to be agreed upon, and we'll try to correct 2024, all that remains to be agreed upon is the deficiency for 22 and 23. Director Evangelista, ang touring ni Mina dati, sa guitar Mina, 50%, ang tawad niya, 95%, bahala kayo mag-usap sa gitna. <laughs> Again, with the concomitant release of the fiduciary funds, uh, and kindly give me that computation too, including pre-2018 fiduciary funds. Uh. Tama si Chair Popo, eh. wala na yung studyante, nag-graduate na eh, released na yun, hindi na fiduciary yun. And we will insert the provision to that effect in the budget. That will uh, make our jobs easier, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Exactly. Kaya nagsisimula tayo sa 50 eh. <laughs> Five percent margin or loss is acceptable, Mister. Kaya lang kayo mag-usap. Uh, ako ano naman? Nagahanap lang naman ako ng solution para masara na yung libro. Eh. Gusto ko lang yung sarang libro ng 22 and 23, and we'll try to address that in 2024. If you're talking, if you're talking four billion, we can look for that in the budget. Yes, to further articulate, Mister Chair, if that will be too much deduction, it will really suffer the program development in our SUCs. And we expect too more... Too much deduction of what? Yun pong tawad natin, kung masyadong malaki ang tawad. Wala na, tapos na yun eh. <laughs> Nangyari na eh. <laughs> Kumbaga, nag-aral na yung studyante noong 22, nag-graduate na noong 23, kung mag-graduate, tapos na yun eh. Yun pong first year noon, eh, pwede pa ngayon. Kumbaga, yung sinturon nyo, hinigpitan nyo ng mga nung taong yun eh. Ano na lang to? Bonus na lang to eh. Look at it that way and think of it that way. Otherwise, if there is no agreement, it will remain a deficiency, an unpaid balance. That's my, that's where I'm coming from. Huh? Unless DBM is convinced and agrees, hindi naman namin kahit mag-appropriate kami, hindi naman nila babayaran. At the end of the day, that's the power of Director Evangelista. Di ba? Again, there are over five to seven trillion worth of unfunded loss. Huh? Last count. So don't be part of that. If I were you, I'd arrive at an agreement and compromise with DBM. And try to represent all SOOKs um, when you meet with them. If you cannot set up a meeting before we resume, I'll, I'll try to be the one to set up a meeting with Secretary Mina, Sher Popoy, and you. As long as you carry with you the voice of all suksa, meaning to say when you commit there, that's it, and it's applicable to all. Ha? Yes, please. Senator Wynn, any other points? Just to reiterate um, the request from uh, Chad regarding the studies, I think this is a very important topic, Mr. Chair, and it's good that we uh, looked at this uh, angle of funding. And just like any other laws, we need to review it. And um, we see, want to um, seek the help of Chad to uh, come up with studies on tuition fee, on enrollment, on the uh, budgetary requirements, particularly on free higher education. So we'll be guided accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Chad. Yes, and the fact that the money does not go through you anymore and goes directly to the SOC is not an excuse not to get the data <laughs> and submit it to Congress. One last point before leaving the point. Um, since Dr. Arcega is here, I'll try to take advantage of um, his presence. 
May problema din ba kayo ng 2022-2023 sa gantong bagay? Wala. Ikaw naman siya, tinatanong ko eh. Dr. Arcega, sir, please. Just to be, be comprehensive about it. Yeah, um, I don't think we have the same uh, level of issue na among LUCs. No? Uh, the delistment and all have been properly um, handled by the Commission on Higher Education. Kasi dumadaan sa kanila. You know, well? This is my first time to know that... Uh, <laughs> No, I'm sorry. This is my first time to know that uh, proceeds can be directly given to the SUCs. No? But if I may be allowed, this is my first time. But, you know, I'm happy that, you know, Chad is in between. At least um, they help us facilitate, you know, the liquidation and all among local colleges and universities. But allow me to, anyway, I've been called Senator. Uh, first and foremost, we would like to thank you and uh, Senator Wino no, for historically including LUCs. I recall that afternoon when I got a call from Senator Wynn asking me about why LUC has not been included. Uh, he made the position to include LUC, of course, through your intervention, Senator Escudero. And forever, I am... Uh, it was a long debate. Yes, yes. Yes, so it was just a call from the Senator and collaboration with you, Mr. Chair, that we have been included. So um, as to the issue of race earlier, really I'm sad now that the amount of proceeds is, you know, it's not the same across all SUCs and whether, and also LUCs. Even among LUCs, there are some receiving 30,025, and there are some receiving about 1,000 or, or 3,500. I've been around the country, Mr. Chair, I'd like to put it in record, that there are some LUCs getting about 9 million, 20 million, in the entire Region 5, where they have 23 LUCs. The highest so far is 25 million, while other LUCs first um, been receiving about 80 million, 70 million and all. So I just hope as we uh, proceed with the issues of SUC, we'll also look into the case of local universities. And college. Right now, I cannot say more about my statement because LUCs are primarily established by local. Is there an issue with respect to the increase of tuition fees of LUCs accredited by CHED as such? Mr. Chair, they're waiting for what happens with the SOOCs, and they're asking that the same treatment be given to them. That is the manifestation of uh, the looks during the last year. There was JMC on yes. tuition fee increase. Actually, should be made to apply to looks as well. Yes, Mr. Chair. And uh, it may be allowed to say very strong about this UNIFAST. Mukhang hindi ho talaga magandang tingnan na pare-pareho silang you know, beneficiary, yet one is receiving 35, 40, more while others. Unit. Yes. More per unit for the same course. Yes. I guess um, I support the recommendation of the good set, uh, Chair and uh, Senator Wynn, you know, that we have to really ask Chet on how this all can be reconciled. Because no? at the end of the day, I'm not even bothered with the increase of enrollment in SUCs. And LUC so, nangangahulugan lang na bago mag-unifast, marami talagang Pilipinong hindi nakakapag-aral. So, uh, like in the case of BSU, I graduated from Batangas State University. I I support the statement of Dr. Longquilio na tatlong pung libo talaga ho yun. Tapos, uh, wala pa sa kalahati ang tinatanggap. And the result of BSU exam will tell us that Quality has not been compromised. They're still stopping the board exam. The percentage is above or close to 100%. Pero sir, ang realidad dito, na malungkot, um, pag hindi natin pinayagan, marami pa rin mo talagang mga bata ang hindi nakakapasok. Even sa LUC, sir, yung dating 500 na 1,000, ibig sabihin, uh, limang daan ang hindi natatanggap dati bago mag-unifast. Ang problem, Mr. Chair, is kung hindi mo natin tatanggapin, I for one, I receive a call, from an LUC. Pag hindi ko kasi tinanggap, sir, medyo, ano eh, um, magiging problema talaga ng locality. But right now, I'd like to believe LUC has been established by the local government. And so, therefore, should there be some deficiency, it's the responsibility of the local government, you know, to prioritize their education. But at the end of the day, sir, hindi ko pantay-pantay eh. Baka ma-solution lang po natin ito, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Well, yung motok ng problema sa SOC, iwasan natin mangyari sa LOC. But let me place this on record, sir. 
Although right now the K-12 program is being reviewed by DepEd itself and also by EDCOM. Do I say win? The logic of K-12, and I remember this vividly because I was helping my dad out when he was chair of basic ed in the house before. The K-12 program was designed to increase the quality of our high school graduates so much so that they don't need anymore to get a college degree to have a job. To cite as an example, noon ang requirement ng police high school graduate lang, sasama ng quality ng mga high school graduate natin na K-10, nagpasa ng batas ang kongresong ni-require na dapat bago ka maging police, college graduate ka for years. And they gave the high school graduate policemen time to comply, a period of seven or eight years na makakuha ng degree. At pag hindi nakakuha, tanggal sila sa pagka-police. But Congress and the private sector has not yet adjusted to K-12. So much so that if you are a graduate of K-12, pwede ka nang matanggap sa trabaho including pagpupulis o kung ano man na hindi na kailangan ng two-year college degree or four-year college degree. It will make the country more productive because instead of plus two years before your child lands a job, minus two years pa ngayon kasi hindi na kailangan magkulehyo eh. The principle again at that time was hayaan mo na yung scientist, yung doktor, yung abogado, yung engineer na mag-college. Pero yung ordinaryong trabaho, hindi na kailangan mag-college. Pwede nang matanggap at tanggapin sa trabaho. Especially na highly technical job. What they teach you on the first year will be outdated by the time he graduates on the fourth year. Essentially, most of our workforce are learning on the job. Doon lang nila natututunan naman talaga yung mga kailangan matutunan eh na never tinuro sa classroom. In fact, what's scary is, given how fast-paced technology is changing, I saw a quote that said, we are actually training our students to solve problems that are not yet problems when you were teaching them. So how can they possibly have the answer for these things when they didn't even know it was going to be a problem by the time they go out in the workplace? Um, so hopefully, um, again, Hindi naman to never ending, Dr. Sega na patas ng patas because once we get our acts together, it should be simpler and faster to um, produce people who are productive and who can actually perform and do the job assigned to them without necessarily having a diploma. Although I thank the Vice President for reviewing the curriculum kasi hanggang ngayon ang paniniwala ko pa rin I was bashed for it for a while pero okay lang. May mga kurso naman talaga hindi na dapat kinukuha. Ikaw po po, nagamit mo na ang trigonometry mo sa high school, sa buong buhay mo? Ako, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa eh. Hindi ko pa nagagamit yung calculus sa kahit anong decision ginawa ko sa buhay ko eh. And yet, I was required to take it. And I nearly failed it. Teh, ngayon kung mag-engineer ka, doon ka na mag-calculus, wag na sa high school. Hirap-hirap doon, wag na sa college. Political science ang course ko, may calculus ako eh. Bakit? Eh, dapat, di ba? Wala na pa na akong ambisyon mag... Gumaling sa mati. I mean, <laughs> Sir, Dr. Ronquillo, ako pangako ko sa'yo, calculus, trigonometry, kahit algebra, hindi ko nagamit. Ang nagamit ko lang, trigonometry. Sa isang bagay lang, sa bilyang. <laughs> Para tama yung angulo, di ba? Para pag binanda mo. <laughs> Kina pa. Anyway, First, uh, thank you um, for that. We'll try to schedule a meeting. If you cannot agree on that and set a meeting, we will try to be the one to set a meeting. Let me know, let our office know, Dr. Nkilo, if you have been empowered by PASOK to deal, bring up to five other representatives for as long as you come up with, in, you attend the meeting with CHED and DBM with a singular position already. Hindi yung magdedebate kayo among yourselves in that meeting, eh? meaning a singular position already on this matter. For some administrative matters, chair here by orders, the Senate Bill number 2445 be consolidated with um, Senate Bill number 1999 and 2269 and House Bill number 6630, which is with the TWG. Same order goes for House Bill number 9015 to be consolidated with Senate Bill number 1908, which is similarly with the TWG. Uh -huh. Oi, 
Hindi kami naghanda ng tanghali yan. Sige na kayo. Thank you for your attendance this morning. Thank you for your participation and input, Senator Wynn. And I'd like to thank again um, Dr. Anquillo for his patience, as well as our other invited um, guests. Good morning, and have a pleasant lunch, everyone. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Wynn. Mr. Chair from the DBM.